Hey, thanks for tuning into the Land and Home Show. Today we are talking about selling land. Hey there, I'm Stephen J.B. Davis, your land specialist and residential realtor here in Central Kentucky and beyond. Uh, today we're in uh, one of my paddocks at my house, uh, in between two of my no two of my most recently proud projects. Uh, two projects that I'm most recently proud of: um, Garden Bed One and Garden Bed Two. Um, I've got a little spare time. I've been in Bourbon County today, uh, showing property, and before I go off to do some uh county government discussion stuff i thought i'd make this video um, i made a post maybe a, a week or two ago on instagram uh and facebook which if you're not following me there you, you should i post a lot more fun things there than i do here this is kind of my instructional space i guess but um i had looked up this landowner whose property i listed uh maybe about a year ago and um, we, we parted ways by, by his choice, uh, nothing ugly or anything like that, but he was pretty convinced that he could do a better job than me, which is fine. You know what? If you want me to hold your beer while you go prove me wrong, by all means, I don't have any issue being wrong. Um, but I won't ever pretend to be, uh, unsure in my job. I take a lot of painstaking effort and time to understand how to do my job. So, you know, I was, I, I kept up with him and, um, or at least uh, the selling of his property and discovered that he did in fact sell it uh, at half the amount that we originally listed it at. And that list price was, was his idea, not mine. But in any case, um, I, it, it got me thinking about this market and, um, how truly unprecedented it is here in the United States. It's not just Kentucky, it's not just New York, it's not Montana, it's not Texas, it's, it's, it's virtually everywhere where people are just clamoring to buy homes, of course, and, and that's all over the news, and that's, you know, every, every Zillow story, every Redfin story, like, you, you can turn on the TV and see how housing prices, um, are, are faring in different locales. Um, and you certainly hear a lot about interest rates rising and all that. Um, you hear a little less about land. Um, every once in a while you hear these stories of, you know, how people are leaving more populated areas and coming to more rural areas. Um, and, and that's happening, but no one, uh, is, no one pays attention to land as much. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And that's not really the point of the video, but with all of the unprecedented real estate news and the unprecedented real estate sellers market, um, I wanted to take some time to talk about, uh, why it's still important to use an agent. And this applies to if you're selling land in Kentucky where I'm licensed and would love to help, or if you're anywhere else, um, it's, it, it's not just a plug for me. I mean, my channel is a plug for myself. <laughs> I don't really need to plug me. I'm great at what I do and I don't, I don't feel ashamed about saying that, but, um, you may be somewhere else and you may be thinking I'm a landowner. Maybe you're an absentee landowner, meaning your land's in another state that you don't actually reside in. And you're thinking, wow, yeah, like it's a seller's market. People will just pay X amount of dollars and, uh, and, and I'll make out like a bandit. And the truth is that's not always the case. Like I was saying, the gentleman that I uh, was helping uh, a year or so ago, um, nice guy, I don't have a, a bad word to say about him, but you know, he got impatient, but at the end of the day, his, his property was listed too high, period. Um, I knew that from the get go, but you know, you do what your clients want you to do. That's a part of, um, the fiduciary responsibility I have to my clients, obedience. So no matter how much I disagree, unless I just don't want them to be my client anymore, um, then I do what they asked me to do within the confines of my own ethical standards and, and the law. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of things here, um, in, in order. Um, it'll be uh, highest and best use that we'll touch on resources, um, marketing, um, buyers, potential buyers, people that comes to your place and your own bias as a landowner um, or maybe a potential landowner that maybe you're looking to flip land or something like that. So first is highest and best use. Um, it's, a, it's a skill, it's a learned skill that you've got to 
have your head around if you want to sell your and this is all about maximizing the, the price right if you're the seller you want the highest price the best terms you you want to walk away with your bottom line as much intact as as possible um or not as much intact but as as high as possible and so understanding your highest and best use is huge and if you if you don't understand that then you could be leaving money on the table which is again why you hire a land specialist um they are we are here to analyze that to help you understand you know what is what all does a piece of land have to offer and that could run the gambit of a lot of things you know whereas a house has one use which is to live in it land has many things um there's such things as commercial land there are such things as agricultural land of course like are you farming on it there are such things as um uh, residential land so maybe there is a house but there's you know 200 acres with it um there's there's all these different uses for land and that's just sort of like a, a macro view but if you don't understand that if you don't understand what your options are or what they could be um, in order to identify what that number one option is that's going to get you that number one price per acre because with that highest and best use comes very different pricing um, if you don't understand that then you're already you're already starting at a deficit okay um, the second thing is resources sometimes selling land just you know say you've got 200 acres you say i'm going to sell these 200 acres to the person who wants to buy it with the highest uh, highest price, best terms, it's the combo of the two, never just one or the other, of course. Um, you could do that. But if you haven't, if you're not in touch with the types of resources that are available on your property, be it um, natural resources, or be it proximity to something that, um, that carries a high value, or a lot of social weight, or geopolitical weight, or something, or if there is uh, some reason to create some type of easement on your property where it may devalue your actual price per acre on the open market, but the tax and or cash benefits may make it such that even though it's devalued, the combo of the conservation easement with you selling it, boom, maybe that is what makes your bottom line the biggest and the best. But of course, not being understanding of of how all of those things work um you know you may you may kind of gloss over that you may just sell the 200 acres not realizing there was more that you could extract for yourself as a seller um the third thing marketing marketing is huge i mean 90 percent. i think that's a real stat if it's not 90 then it's really really damn close 90 percent of real estate stuff starts online now in the united states i can't talk about you know if you're in south africa watching this or, or europe somewhere I, I don't know what goes on there but here um you're using the internet it could be zillow it could be land.com it could be you know the mom and pop real estate company in town but you're you're probably on the internet it's not a millennial thing it's not a zillennial thing it's an everybody thing you know, my, my 96 year old grandfather uses the internet and you probably know somebody that's almost as old, old using it too. It's a matter of where they're at. And so marketing is huge because if you don't know, if you haven't figured out highest and best use and resources on your property, among all the other things that go into it, um, and then knowing where to showcase your land in order to find that best buyer. If you don't know where those buyers are in the vast internet space, Again, you're starting at a deficit. And of course, who knows that? Well, land specialists know that, I know that. Um, folks out wherever it is you're watching this from, they, they know where these places are. And if they don't, they might not should be calling themselves a specialist in land. Um, but in any case, people are on the internet looking for stuff. And so then it's not just the location, but it's also how you showcase your property and the quality of that showcase. Um, I don't know how many listings I come across helping my buyers where it is a picture from a car window and my buyers are like well I mean I don't really want to go out there I'm not really like interested in seeing it like can you see if there are more pictures inevitably there are, are there are never more pictures um, but 
it's a turnoff. I mean, it's like taking real estate pictures inside a house with your cell phone and your fingers in front of every single picture, or there's a cat running across the frame, or, you know, the TV's on and there there's someone's like dirty laundry in the background. That That's the kind of vibe it gives off, you know? No one wants a roadside picture. Um, so how you do it is, is huge. Where you place that marketing is huge. And the quality of those marketing efforts is huge. So that's number three. Um, number four is your buyers. Um, you're using a listing agent, whether they're selling land or, or just a, a house in like kind of a normal neighborhood setting, but vetting buyers, understanding, you know, how the, um, the financing around acquiring a piece of real estate is currently working at that time, that's huge. You may say, oh sure, well I know that the house next door sold for this, or I know that the property next door that was 100 acres sold for that. Okay, well that's great. But when someone comes to you with an offer, understanding uh, maybe some of the implied or not explicitly stated parts of the of that offer is huge because um, you know when you see this bank name, versus this bank name, let's call it a conventional loan for both because, you know, this is not a discrimination thing around um, which loan is better, but some banks have a lot easier of a path to get to a place than other places do. And uh, some places just don't deal in land. And so having that knowledge of, of who's going to be able to appraise the land, um, how that's going to work so that you actually make it to the finish line versus like, maybe an uneducated buyer or an un uneducated buyer's agent where land is concerned saying, okay, well, we've got a pre-approval, but it turns out pre-approval is with some big box bank or maybe even a smaller, small town bank that doesn't even deal in land in the first place. Well, now you've accepted an offer and your stuff's off the market and you're fighting through all of the nonsense that it takes to, you know, get released from a contract and this and that. Um, it pays to have that kind of knowledge. Um, it pays to be tapped into um, who does land best, where loans are concerned, because not everybody's buying cash. And if they are buying cash, that proof of funds, who's gonna stick up for you? If you're more, maybe more of a soft-spoken person and you don't really like to you know, press people or sweat stuff or be the bad guy, that's kind of what your listing agent is for, um, to make sure that you can get to the finish line. Who wants to tie up their land with somebody who ultimately can't afford it? Um, you know, it's not Target. This isn't, you know, just a place where clothes are out and you can just kind of try on clothes and window shop. Like it's, it's a lot bigger than everyday commodities. It's real estate. Um, so understanding who buyers are on paper, understanding who it is they're working with from a, a lending aspect, sometimes even from an agent aspect, you know, gauging how hard or difficult a, a deal may be based on the details and the personnel of their offer is an enormous value. Um, and again, that's why you hire a land specialist, a land agent. We call ourselves lots of different things, a land pro. Um, and then lastly, you're biased. Of course, everybody wants the highest price. You see someone just made a crazy amount of money on something they bought last year and you know they sold it for $200,000 more. You're like, yes, that can be me. I want that too. Or maybe on the flip side, you're just like, you know, I put all this time and effort and energy into this land and I, I deserve X amount of dollars. Um, it, it, those concepts, whether it's, you know, comparing yourself to the, you know, to the folks next door and that grass being greener and you wanting some of that grass, or you're, you just have like an emotional attachment to a legacy that you've built. Um, those don't always translate to dollars. Your situation's not necessarily the situation of the parcel next door. And certainly <laughs> the work that we all put into any property, home or land, um, does not always translate to a buyer caring, and, and nor should they. You know, if you put a lot of landscaping effort into a house, I always tell people, that's great. It's great for you to enjoy it, but no one cares about your tulips. They don't care where they're from. They don't care about your perennials. They don't care that you've got the best, you know, mulch in town. Nobody cares. Certain things just don't translate into you know, being able to take advantage of, of, uh, of your situation. 
the best kind of way. So between the highest and best use, the, the resources that may or may not be on your land or the financial options that you have to exploit resources separately, um, the marketing, that's the how, the where, the quality, uh, your buyer's situation, so the people that are coming to your land to see it, the people that are offering, and then of course, your own concept and attachment to you know the time, money, effort you've spent in, in owning a piece of land, um, understanding how those five things relate, let alone understanding them separate, separately, uh, is a is a huge deal into getting that maximum dollar. Um, it's a it's a really big deal, and of course, you know, people get lucky. People sometimes are they have more experience than the average person does in real estate and buying and selling it. Um, I'm not saying that it is impossible to sell without. A, a land specialist when you own land, but um, you it's selling land's not easy. It's not a house and it's not um, a thing where your land's gonna be exactly like the next person's land, the way that you can find two makes and models of a car. If you don't like this car lot guy, you go to this other place and get the same thing. It, it doesn't work that way. And so navigating those five concepts and navigating just the inherent nature of land um, is very difficult to do on your own. Um, but sometimes we get lucky, you know, like if someone's choking next to me and I manage to be able to get whatever it is they're choking on dislodged from their throat. Yeah, you could say I, I saved their life, right? Doesn't make me a doctor. You know, that's the difference. Um, so you can try it on your own, but you may end up like uh, the fellow I was helping, which frankly, I probably could have gotten more money had we started in a way more reasonable spot. I mean, he took 50% of of what we listed it for, which was again, his choice, not mine. I would have never listed it that high um, if it were my property or with someone that was a little bit more uh, understanding of, of where I was coming from and the fact that uh, my opinion was rather informed one. I don't want people to end up like that though, but oftentimes it is like that. Um, we, we get one of these five components uh, mixed up. I shouldn't say we, not me, but uh, consumers get one of these five components of showcasing their land or, or marketing it, getting it on the market, etc. They get them mixed up or, or they, they don't consider one of them or they have a poor understanding of one of them or all of them and it results in the exact opposite of really where they wanted to be in the first place, um, which is paid. <laughs> So in any case, I wanted to make this uh, to educate you as I always am trying to do to give you uh, just some straightforward info. Um, I've got some cool stuff coming up and I know I'm late on neighborhood tours. We've had terrible, terrible weather and I have been traveling a lot, uh, trying to see family in the meantime because you know we're all catching up from COVID and whatever. So uh, in any case, uh, I will keep you posted on my new two prides and joys, these wonderful garden beds. I've got some big plans here, some big plans next to my house with some herbs and lettuces. Um, and until next time, I'll see you later. I've got to go talk about the future of Lexington <laughs> uh, here with some of my neighbors. And um, I hope you all stay safe. I hope things are warming up. Um, can't say that it's really all that warm here, but hopefully we get some warm weather soon. And leave your thoughts, questions, comments below in the description. Uh, and adios.